Yes, good, good day to you. Today is Monday, April the 3rd, 2023. Had a little technical difficulty, so I had to post this uh, clip or this video late. And so I am reading and reflecting on the book titled 40 Days with the Holy Spirit. It is a journey to experience his presence in a fresh new way. The author's name is R.T. Kendall, and you can order the book on Amazon.com. So I am on day 12. This is day 12 and learning how to spend quality time with the Holy Spirit. And I am... Uh, just embarking on on something new where you know God is showing me how to spend quality time with him you know and it's it's not easy it's welcoming because we want to spend time with the Lord but it's getting to that place getting to that place of um just anticipating to get into his presence. And so day 12 uh, is a wonderful chapter for me today. This chapter is titled, The Holy Spirit Prepares Us for Service. Not just uh, Sunday service. We're talking about acts of service, acts of kindness, acts of generosity, giving of ourselves, coming out of our comfort zones and getting into a place of um, having a joy in uh, serving others. Um, so this is very a very important attribute uh, from the Holy Spirit that we need to gain from this book because our whole journey is based on learning how to serve others and to not stay in our self-serving modes um, most of the time and wanting to stay in that comfort zone. I don't have, really, I don't have a heart for serving that's not one of my um, strengths, but I'm learning how to get out of my comfort zone at this good old age of 60 because this is, I, I want to be in my comfort zone at all times. You know, I want the comfortable shoes. I want the comfortable bed. I want the television on and I just want to veg out. I, I'm, I'm seriously a vegetable, but I know God is calling me to something greater than just sitting around and watching all my favorite shows on tel television. Uh, it does, lo it does um, give me comfort. And so um, I have to learn how to be of service to God and his people. And R.T. Kendall starts this chapter with the story of how the prophet Samuel anointed David, who became king of Israel after Saul, and he anointed him with oil to be the next king. So oil in that in those days they would take a um, you know a bottle uh, uh, of oil and, and literally pour it over the person's head who was who was going um, to be anointed, and so. Um, R.T. Kendo uh, begins, um, this story begins in 1 Samuel 16, chapter 16. And so uh, the prophetic word that Samuel spoke over David was not the extended prophecy from God because it took 20 more years after that prophecy for David to become king of Israel. And so, in fact, God did not mention to David in the prophecy that he would also have to run for his life from the current king, who was King Saul. King Saul was jealous of David and wanted to kill him before he would take Saul's place as king. And so, R.T. Kendall reminds us when God commits us to service for him, the Holy Spirit does not often tell us nothing regarding all of the pitfalls and disappointments that we may face along the way going into uh, God's perfect plan for our lives. And so uh, we as God's chosen servants will fall into all types of trials and tribulations without warning. We will uh, just realize we are being tried and tested either in the trial or after we come out on the other side of the trial or test or tribulation. And so I always realize my tests and trials 
and tribulations. I realized they were they were tests from uh, my heavenly Father after I come out of them on the other side. Uh, some people catch the the download and the intel, you know, either before or while they're going through it. I come out of it. God God covers me through it all, but I kind of get all my flags, my my flags that were raised, and you know my my uh, little uh, things that I kind of uh, paid attention to, and then once I understand it was a test or it was a trial, then that's when all the lights come on. <laughs> The experience, the experience of it all. So, um, I, yeah, I come out on the other side and I say, oh, okay, I see. Now I see, which R.T. Kendo describes as learning by experience, okay? But I always ask for more spiritual discernment and insight daily so I can get a glimpse of what might come as a try or a test for me. And so prayer is the key to getting through more of our tests and trials and tribulations. If we go to God in prayer daily and say, Lord, you know, reveal to me, show me um, if there's anything that I will be put through, what fire, what type of fire, how hot it is, you know, prepare me, Lord, prepare my heart for it. Prepare my, prepare my heart to receive all that you have for me, Lord. Okay. R.T. Kendall explains how God does not lead us from A to Z in our spiritual walk, but God leads us from A to B, then B to C, and etc., which is pretty much what walking by faith and not by sight is all about. R.T. Kendall gives a song, One Day at a Time, which is a popular gospel song that is requested a lot in hospitals, he says. And in the book, I have to look that song up one day at a time. And so, um, R.T. Kendall goes on to say that when David was anointed to be king, he was not automatically fit to be king. And uh, R.T. Kendall describes how young David's anointing had to be refined because King Saul did not allow God to teach him and refine him to be king. And his success came too soon for Saul and he started operating and leading by his own power and manipulation. Manipulation and your own power will take over your anointing or you will not be able to express God's glory with how he's going to use you if we act too fast or act in our flesh or act in just our mind and not let the spirit come and lead us and guide us and, you know, give us that, um, and, you know, that anointing that we need to walk out God's plan. Okay. And so, uh, David is known as a man after God's own heart and God was going to make sure that David did not operate in control manipulation the way King Saul did. So God took his time with David. Samuel anointed young David and God had to put him through different things to get him to the levels of life that he needed to get him to. So um, when God decides to anoint us for a purpose and his plan, it does not mean we are ready to run out the gate with his anointing and power he placed on our lives. Everyone's anointing needs to be refined. So R.T. Kendall quoted Victor Hugo, which says, like the trampling of a mighty army, so is the force of an idea whose time has come. And then R.T. Kendall paraphrased the quote and said, like the trampling of a mighty army, so is the force of one's anointing whose time has come. So God will release us in due time and due season when it is our season. We were saying Sunday at the Easter dinner, um, we were saying there's a clip out with um, a woman on Family Feud with Steve Harvey. And when it was time for her to do her questions at the end to gain points to see if the family would win $10,000, I believe, she just started, she just busted out with Holy Spirit, activate, Holy Spirit, activate, Holy Spirit, activate. And so Steve Harvey, you know, he looked dumbfounded. and He just started looking at her, you know, how Steve Harvey is. And he just started looking at her like, really, lady? But 
you know, it's it's a viral video and just search for Holy Spirit activate. But that's what the Holy Spirit wants to do. He wants to activate us in our due time. And he does not want us to be so um, antsy and so, you know, excited to work his plan out for our life. He wants us to stay under his mighty wings so that we can understand, Lord, how do you want me to work this plan out? You know, give me everything I need for so that I could be your mouthpiece that I'm not up there in my flesh trying to gain all the glory. God wants us to stay humble in every, every part of his plan that he has for us. And his plan is to prosper us and not harm us, Jeremiah 29 and 11, to give us a hope and a future. I think I've said that scripture in every uh, video that I've made so far, Jeremiah 29 and 11. Okay, so we must remember when God touches our hearts for his work and purpose, we have to sit down and allow the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us into all of God's truth for our lives. We have a truth. God has a truth. We want to marry our truth with God's truth. We want to see God reign in our lives. We want to see God's glory displayed in our hearts and in our lives. We want to surpass logic and we want to rent we want to render logic our logical thinking helpless to where the spirit now takes over and he edifies uh, us and he is able to um, inspire others through us you know so even the 12 disciples spoke foolishly to Jesus in Matthew chapter 20 verse 22 and it says they said we are able lord we are able like they were ready they were ready to to run out of the gate, you know, because they just thought they really, you know, was anointed and ready, you know, to take over. But Jesus rebuked them and told them, whoever wishes to become great among you shall be your servant. Because Jesus did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. So God knows the truth about all of us. We all need more preparation to work for God's kingdom as one of his uh, servants to bring God the bring God all the glory not our glory not our will but your will be done Lord Jesus okay RT Kendall goes on to say in this chapter that David's evidence of his anointing came when his uh when he killed Goliath uh, the giant Goliath that's found in first Samuels chapter 17 and it was the best thing that happened to David but then it was also the worst thing that happened to him because killing Goliath it won King Saul's favor it won the favor of the king but then it also provoked Saul's wrath um, to start hunting David down and you know making him run into caves and stuff he wanted to execute God's plan before David could even you know get all of the download from God to know he was favored by God and uh, he was an, an anointed king. He was not an appointed king, but he was anointed to be king. So God, um, so David was being shaped and prepared to be Israel's next king. And so R.T. Kendall confirms in this chapter that if yours or my, my, my time has not yet come, it is because we need further preparation. Okay, R.T. Kendall describes in this chapter that after he graduated from college, he knew he was going to be used by God one day, but his father was puzzled because his father felt he abandoned the theology of his old denomination, the denomination that R.T. Kendall grew up in. And so his father questioned if God was truly with his son. And so R.T. Kendall explains that it also took um, RT Ken, it took him 22 years from being tested and tried by God to finally hear from his father that he was that his father was proud of him for the ministry work God placed in him placed um, him in. So a lot of times, you know, we can have trials from our families, you know, our loved ones. They don't see us how God sees us. I mean, we don't even see them how God sees them. So it's a dynamic there that. They think they know us. They think they have summed us up. They see the old patterns um, still in us. And there's that judgmental spirit that they are dealing with us through a judgmental mindset. 
but God knows that we are blessed and that we have work to do. And so he will inspire us to get out of the uh, family structure, to love them, but to know that, Lord, you have something for me. I'm in your presence. I'm in your face. I want to spend time with you. How do I glorify you? How do I get um, these these gifts and talents stirred up and activated? You know, Holy Spirit, activate. So um, God knows our frame. And reminds us in Psalms 103, chap, uh, verse 14, that we are dust. And God knows how much each of us can bear and leads us according to our need, our measure of strength and what we may need from him down the road. So God knows how much uh, each of us can bear. And so he leads each one of us accordingly to our need. We all are different. The body of Christ is made up of many, many parts. The toes are not the hair. The hair is not the hands. The hands is not the 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 legs. So we all uh, know that God wants us to uh, just just stay stay under His presence, stay under His you know strength and everything. And so R. T. Kendall says he doesn't think David. Or any one of us would be able to cope daily if we know in advance that we would have to run for our lives through tests and trials for 20 years or more as God is preparing us and, you know, um, putting us through uh, the fire, some say, you know, where we have to understand. We have to understand that there is a process to uh from by God that God wants to use us, but he has to take us through a process. And so uh, one year is hard enough, let alone 20 years of trouble and pit pitfalls. That's what R.T. Kendall said, that um, one year is hard enough on us. Then for us to understand we got 20 years of trouble and pitfalls to, to get through. Uh, so we all have to go through God's preparation and we will learn a lot from life's experiences if we trust God and stick close to him during our times of trials and testing and experiences to know that we had to go through it for a reason. You know, we don't understand why we have to go through certain things, but that's how God um, shapes us. And that's how he shapes character. Are we going to pass these tests? Are we going to fail these tests? I failed many of tests in my times, but each time I failed, I had to learn to get back up and try again, get back up and don't, don't react or interact this way next time if this certain thing comes up, you know, and learning how not to take things so personal now that I know that this is not my fight. I mean, I knew it was God's fight, but I was the mouthpiece or I was the, the vessel uh, and so I would take things so personal when anybody would do anything to me that was offensive to me or say things to me that was offensive. But God is just showing me that the enemy is always going to be on our tracks. He's always going to be on our tail. He's always going to have someone come and try to hurt us psychologically, mentally, physically, emotionally, you know, I hope no one ever steps to me in the physical sense and tries to hurt me physically. Um, I believe I can now handle the mental aspects, the psychological aspects, the emotional aspects, and the spiritual because we're in, we're in a battle. We're in, we're, in a, we're in spiritual warfare. And the more we get into God's presence and in prayer and fasting and understanding that God wants us to rebuke the devourer at all times and to know that the enemy also uses vessels and people he has to operate through or he sends his best demons to operate through them and they're being controlled in their mind because they're all logic and they're not spirit. They're not thinking above their mindset. They're not thinking that they have to strengthen their spirit man and put on the full armor of God so that we can withstand the test and the trials and the fiery weapons and darts the enemy throws at us all day. It says he roams around uh, like a roaring, a roaring 
lion seeking whom he may devour. So he's he's on our tip 24-7 trying to hurt and harm us. But God comes to give us uh, an abundant faith-filled life. And he wants to help us and he does not want to harm us. He wants to see us, you know, excel uh, and go from glory to glory in, in Jesus' name. Okay. So um, we all have to go through God's preparation. We will learn a lot from life's experiences if we trust God and stick close to him during our times of trials and testing. And so like King David, we will learn the meaning of God's mercy and grace upon our lives. When we stick with God, we will learn of his mercy and his grace upon our lives. His grace is efficient for us and his new mercies are renewed to us each and every day. So God spared King David's life many times when King Saul was trying to kill him. God is so merciful and will cover us and completely protect us with his pinions and under his wings we will find refuge. And so that uh, brings me to Psalms 91. It wasn't in the book, but I want to read the whole chapter because I love the Psalms. And the Psalms was part of King David's reign. It was part of his ministry. It was part of his uh, time he spent with God. He was able to get this these heartfelt downloads and um, write poems to God, you know, his highest you know, power that he knew was helping him get through these tests and trials so that he can be the best servant for God. And, and he was king, you know, so that, that speaks a lot of for the King David, a man after God's own heart. He was serving God and he was king of Israel. That's powerful to me because the normal kings that would rule and reign and rise up, they were totally the opposite of the heart that God, that David had for, for his people and God. Okay, so Psalms 91, I'm going to read. It says, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will remain secure and rest in the shadow of the Almighty, whose power no enemy can withstand. I will say to the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust with great confidence and on whom I rely. For He will save you from the trap of the fowler, and from the deadly pestilence he will cover you and completely protect you with his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge his faithfulness is a shield and a wall you will not be afraid of the terror of night nor the arrow that flies by day nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness nor the destruction sudden death that lays waste at noon a thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but danger will not come near you. You will only be a spectator as you look on with your eyes and witness the divine repayment of the wicked as you watch safely from the shelter of the Most High. Because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil will befall you, nor will any plague come near your tent, for he will command his angels in regard to you to protect and defend and guard you in all your ways of obedience and service. They will lift you up in their hands so that you do not even strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion and cobra, the young lion and the serpent. You will trample underfoot. Because he has set his love on me, therefore I will save him. I will set him securely on high, because he knows my name. He can confidently trust and relies on me, knowing I will never abandon him, nor no ever. He will call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him with, in honor. And honor him with a, with a long life. I will satisfy him and I will let him see my salvation. So uh, this speaks high volumes on King David because he knew God so well or him and God had such a good relationship that he he would get downloads from God and God would speak and, you know, give him the words, the muse. They, some say the muse is upon me so that anointing was on him and that he would write these poems and God would speak to him. And that is the Psalms that we read today that helps us along our journey, that helps us and guides us into combat the enemy with the word of God, 
you know, and so I love Psalms 91. There's so many more Psalms that we can read daily and just know that God is with us. You know, Maranatha, Emmanuel, God is with us. Okay, so that was Psalms 91. So R.T. Kendall closes this chapter with reminding us when David wrote the book of Psalms, he probably did not know these 150 poems written from his grateful heart and dark experiences would one day be a part of the Bible. King David learned to be grateful, which you will see in the book of Psalms. And King David learned how not to grieve the Holy Spirit. And he had to stay humble during God's preparation. So he did not allow pride in his ego to take precedence over God's timing for him to be God's anointed king and is considered in the Bible a man after God's own heart. Jesus came from the descendant of King David as well. So our Lord, our King Jesus, who died on the cross for us, we just celebrated his uh, resurrection this past Sunday. He came from the lineage of King David, and that speaks volumes because Jesus was God in the form of a human being of man, and he came and died for our sins to set us free and to uh, give us a, a redemption power and purpose and a plan for our life, okay? So God would train us to become spiritual generals in God's army, and we will, he will teach us leadership and how to govern his faithful warriors. And most of all, we have to learn to trust God fully, even when things seem un utterly bleak. When we feel like we're in Cricketville somewhere, we're not hearing from God, he's taken us through. He's taken us through to the other side. He's taken us through the waters. You know, he's taken us through these times that we just don't get it. But when he activates us, Holy Spirit, activate. Holy Spirit, activate. Activate. Just wait. Just be patient. He's teaching us patience. He's given us the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, long-suffering, or faithfulness. That's where faithfulness comes in. Lord, and self-control. But, you know, Lord, I, I, I have to be faithful to this because you have been faithful. You have been faithful. And I just thank you for bringing me through some of these dark times and dark trials when the enemy was on me. And wanted to literally take me out of this realm, kill me pretty much. Um, so I thank God every day and I say, Lord, I will wait as long as I need to wait for you. Because you are showing me because you would not have um, saved me and taken me out of these trouble, troubling situations that I got myself into. I get myself into stuff or we get ourselves into things. And he comes and snatches us and gets us out of hell even if it says i'm if you even if you make your bed in hell i'm gonna come get you girl daughter come on let's go silly girl um tricks are for kids <laughs> and boy was i dealing with tricks <laughs> sheeps uh um, I call them clown, clowns and counterfeits and wolves and sheep's clothing. And they could come in as pretty as they want to be. That man, for me, I love men. They will be as pretty as they want to be. Shiny, just look so innocent. Look like a sheep. I mean, look, really look like a sheep. But they have that mask on. They have that, that costume on. And all you got to do is unzip it <laughs> from the back while they're not looking. And you'll see them them goat hoofs. You'll see the, the those uh wolf wolf feet, those wolf wolf hoofs. <laughs> and you'll begin to say, Oh my lord, this is not a sheep. This is not a man who God sent my way. This man is not operating in the fruits of the spirit and in the Holy Spirit. This man is operating in manipulation and control. And this man is operating and many other spirits, because he's all logic, all mind, and he's not in the will of God. So, whew, yes, okay. So anyway, uh, ending this chapter, um, it says, okay, God will train us to become spiritual generals, okay? I think I read that in God's army, and he will teach us leadership and how to govern his faithful warriors. And most of all, we have to learn to trust God fully, even when things seem utterly bleak. Yes, that's where I stopped, the utterly bleakness. You know, um, 
Come on out of Crickville. Come on out of Lodabar, uh, the low places. God wants to raise us up. He wants to take us higher. King David trusted God this way. And when his day came to take the throne, he turned out to be the greatest king Israel ever had. And God will make our destiny all worth waiting for. If we just wait on the Lord, uh, he will renew our strength. And so R.T. Kendall ends with the question to his readers, are you and I waiting for our time to come? God will ensure that we will not take matters into our own hands and embark on any of his opportunities until you and I are ready. So let us prepare. Let us prepare by praying daily, getting into God's presence daily with his word, um, listening to worship music and just opening up our hearts to receive what he has for us. There's endorphins that are released when we go into joy mode and we begin to worship God and lift our hands up and ask him to to bless us and call him blessed and know that he is our king. He is the king of king and the Lord of lords. He's going to come down and he's going to wage war with 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 the last enemy. And he, we going to be right behind him. They said his saints are going to be with him. They're going to rise up from their sleep. Some who don't have not even died are going to be caught up to meet him. And he's, he wants to, he wants to finally knock out that last, oh, ugly, evil thing that has, that comes to haunt us daily. I'm tired of him. He is so annoying. And he always brings, the enemy always brings the wrong weapon to the gunfight. It's supposed to be a a, a, a gunfight, and he brings a, he brings a a stupid knife. You know, he 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 just he's manipulative. So we have to get into our spirit uh, mode. We have to allow God to help us get to our spiritual levels that He wants to take us to. Um, learning what your spiritual, um, you know, heavenly. Uh, languages between you and your God speaking in tongue is just your own heavenly language between you and your God you don't have to um, go into church and and be loud in your spiritual tongue you know in your heavenly language you just begin to open up your mouth and let the tongue flow you know thank you Jesus Um, so yes we we have to wait on God at all times so for further study On this attribute, on uh, how the Holy Spirit prepares us for service, Uh, R.T. Kendall gave these uh, books or these scriptures to uh, meditate on. And they are 1 Samuel chapter 24, 1 Samuel chapter 26, Psalms 23, Psalms 91, Psalms 136, Isaiah 40, Matthew 20. And so the prayer uh, at the end of this chapter says, Gracious Holy Spirit, thank you for the way you refine us. Forgive me for trying to rush you. I know that time belongs to you and is in your hands. Make me patient and grateful until my time comes. In Jesus' name, amen. And so day 13, that um, chapter or, or time with the Lord or the Holy Spirit Uh, The title of of it is The Holy Spirit Speaks Through Us. The Holy Spirit Speaks Through Us. And if we just have an open heart to serve Him, He will begin to speak to us um, on on behalf of others. He wants others to um, come to the Lord through through our um, service, through serving the Holy Spirit. So with that, I'm going to close with a prayer just asking God to bless um, all those who may have found me who have found my voice that uh, Lord you will bless each and every person um, open up their hearts open up their um, eyes their spiritual eyes and ears to see that they are being called for such a time as this that we are spiritual kings and queens uh, having this human experience Um, And that we have to, at all times, remember the spiritual crown that you want to place on our heads and that you want to give us, Father God. And um, 
we ask you for forgiveness. We ask you to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We ask you, Lord, to come into our hearts, make us a new person, a new creature, a new servant for you that we may be of service to you in this uh these last hours, this last, uh, these last days that we are in, Father God, um, ask you to cover us with your blood and to protect us at all times from hurt, harm, and danger, seen and unseen. Put a fence around us um, each and every day, Father God, and I just ask you to help us to get gain more clarity and more revelation and illumination and impartation through uh, this time of learning what the Holy Spirit is through each chapter, Father God, uh, preparing us for service, Father God, in a day 12, Father God, and um, how the Holy Spirit empowers for prophecy from day 11. Lord Jesus, and uh, how the Holy Spirit empowers for leadership in day 10, Father God, and the Holy Spirit transfers anointing in day 9, Father God. Um, day 8, the Holy Spirit overrules. Thank you for teaching us that, Lord. Day 7, the Holy Spirit gives talent. Our gifts and talents stir them up, Father God. Day six, the Holy Spirit vindicates. You will vindicate us in due time if anyone is accusing us, making false accusations against our life. You are our vindicator. You will vindicate us. Day five, the Holy Spirit gives warnings. We thank you for the warnings, Father God, that you give us, Father God. And so day four, the Holy Spirit was involved in creation. I thank you for that chapter, Lord. Day three, the Holy Spirit is eternal. Thank you for eternal salvation in you, Jesus. Day two, the Holy Spirit is a person. We know you're not just a it or a thing, but you are personified in the Trinity. You are a person. You come and walk alongside of us daily. You teach us and guide us and lead us into all truth. And then day one, the Holy Spirit is God. Yes, you are God and you are God alone. And I just thank you, Father, just for teaching us uh, these attributes of uh, the best thing that has ever happened to us. And that was when we put everything down, put our flesh down, and we decided to follow you in the spirit, Father God. So I thank you for this time. I thank you for understanding us, even sometimes when we don't understand one another and we don't even understand ourselves sometimes. You understand us. You made us. We are fearfully and wonderfully made in your image and in your likeness. And I thank you for every, every person, every personality, every persona, every um, person who uh, wants to seek you, Father God, bring them in, bring them in, anoint their head with oil so their cup will run, uh, their cup runneth over, Father God. And uh, I just thank you for this time. I thank you for preparation. I thank you for pre preparing us for service. I thank you that we can sit down and we can open up our Bible and we can open up our notebooks, Lord Jesus, and have our pen ready um, or have our laptops open to type uh, some of the stuff you download into us through other people, your prophets, your priests, your preachers, your evangelists, your apostles, the anointed who really, really love you and love your people. So I thank you right now, Father, for everything that you've done so far, everything that you are doing, everything that you are continuing to do in our lives. Um, I bind backlash and retaliation on every side of us from the north, the south, the east, the west that your angels will camp around us and cover us and protect us from all hurt, harm and danger, seen and unseen, that the enemy might feel like he has um, an opening to our lives. Father God, close up all illegal entry accesses to our soul. Well, Father God, whether if it's idolatry, we're holding on to things, we're wanting to see things our way, we're antsy, we're not taking time to spend time with the Holy Spirit. And Father God, we ask you to close up all of those illegal entry accesses. The enemy may be able to come in through cracks and through windows and doors of our soul. Father God, we bind bitterness. We bind hard-heartedness. Hard -heartedness. 
Lord, break up the fallow ground. Soften our hearts. Make our hearts like flesh. Teach us to forgive. Teach us, Lord, how to stop holding on to old stuff. And teach us that you want to make us new creatures in Christ Jesus. With all this said, I thank you, Father. This time has ended for this chapter and that you will be our God more than anything. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Jesus, our Christ, our Lord and risen Savior, and who is coming back soon, and the Holy Spirit, who Jesus left behind and told us that he will leave us a comforter. He will leave us a helper to teach us and guide us into all truth for our life. Thank you, Father. I love you. I could go on and on and on, but I know that I have to stop and I have to continue on throughout my day when I'm riding my car, uh, spending time with you. I pray these things in your name. It is done. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Yes, if um, anyone needs to understand what uh, maybe God is uh, preparing you for, it could be um, soul wounds that need to be healed. Uh, It could be... um, deliverance sessions that you may need to go through deliverance is not scary it's not nothing spooky in fact it is the best thing that you could ever um, plan to do for yourself it is a soul wound sessions where you will be guided through some ministers um deliverance team that i've been working with and just taking us back to different parts of our lives to where we felt the soul wound uh, happened or occurred in our life, Uh, whether it was, you know, molestation as a kid, you know, someone touching us inappropriately, showing us uh, pornography at a young age we had no business looking at, Um, just different things from school, uh, peer interaction, peers teasing, laughing, um, people speaking word curses into your life, telling you what you can't do as opposed to speaking good things over your life and telling you what you can do. There's um, agents that the enemy will send in and try to stop and hinder and hurt and harm Uh, us before we could even begin to understand who we were in the body of Christ or in the spirit realm. So uh, for further information, if you need help in that area, if you just feel like you're defeated, you're bored, uh, I'm saved, but I'm bored. God wants to activate you. He wants to prepare you. He wants to get you in the game. He wants to give you an adventure of a lifetime once you start serving Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, God our Father, it is an adventure, trust me. He has so much for you. He has gifts and talents that he needs to stir up in your spirit and just um, use you. You know, I say, yes, Lord, use me. You know, everybody else out there in the world was trying to use me, but uh, it didn't yield anything but bad fruit. What does God do with bad fruit? I don't think he makes wine out of fermented fruit. He might, but he throws bad fruit away. So anyway, God bless everyone. Jesus loves you. I love you. Stay um, faithful. Stay faithful to the journey. No matter how dark and bleak it looks, Cricketville, just keep on. You know, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for God is with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Get to that point. Let God prepare that banquet table for you in the presence of your enemy. He is going to show off. Not that you want anyone to be harmed by God, but, you know, whatever you sow, that's what you will reap. That is God's law, sowing and reaping. Just like the farmer sowing and reaping, sowing and reaping, you're going to reap whatever it is you sow. If you're sowing bad words over people, uh, uh, word curses over people, you're going to reap that in some type of way. And it might not happen right away. Uh, They say that karma which is just like sowing and reaping is a patient gang is the patient gangster. So, you know, I wouldn't wish that on anyone. I wouldn't wish 
um, the reaping, the the reaping of of bad sowing. You know, I wouldn't wish that on anyone. So be careful what you speak forth on other people. If you don't have nothing nice to say, don't say anything at all. You know, just keep your mouth shut because it's going to, it's like a boomerang is going to come back. Those words are going to come back and knock you right in your head and your forehead. And you don't want any bad karma to come to you. So knock it off, cut it out. So anyway, that was for somebody. Um, yes, you can find me on Instagram on my, at my square life eight, the number eight, uh, or here on, um, YouTube, uh, Antoinette Cole TV. I want to get my, um, station or my TV to pop in a little bit more. You know, I want to do some fun things. Um, so that's why I'm just sitting back and asking God to prepare me for all that he has for me. All right, with all that, be blessed in Jesus' name. Until then, tomorrow, day 13 is, again, I think I said it before, that the Holy Spirit speaks through us. That should be a wonderful, wonderful chapter to delve into. All right, take care. Be blessed.